Alright, we're back, and now we're taking on, uh, Vanilla Secret, uh, 2. Hey, Yoshi's back, alright. Now we got all these, uh, uh, flying, uh, jumping Koopa Troopas coming at us. So we gotta be careful right here. And Yoshi got hit, no problem. Yeah, like I said, I mean, Yoshi, you know, you have your advantages here or there. You know, Yoshi could take that extra hit for you, but at the same time, you can't depend on that damage boost forever. Unless you want to be a total, uh, dick about it. Alright, so right here, and I get hit again by the jumping piranha plant. Yeah, so this stage right here, this would be the stage you could actually, uh, farm for lives. Uh, if you grab a P-switch, uh, a gray P-switch, uh, backtrack back to where those jumpy Koopa Troopers were, activate the switch there, go backwards, you can farm so many lives, it's ridiculous. You can easily cap at 99 lives, just in that, uh, area alone. Yeah, the hidden P-switch, uh... Uh, the P-switch is hidden in one of those blocks. Forgot which one it was. Uh, I forgot to show it off, but oh well. Now we got, uh, ba bombs uh, making their appearance already. But we're gonna say, uh, F it, and we're just gonna go right. Yeah, so the stage, uh, not too many, uh, hazards in the way. You get a little tricky here and there, but nothing you can't handle. Alright, bonus time. And we have mushrooms. Lovely. Okay. Alright, got one at least. Hey, that's one less than we didn't have before. Now we have 54 lives. Alright, now we're in Vanilla Secret uh, 3, and this stage right here is really, uh, it's not too difficult, it's a platform heavy stage, but with the Cape Feather and Yoshi, you can pretty much skip all this. Just showing off the dolphins, and we have this asshole right here in our way. He's basically the only enemy in this game that can actually hurt you. Every other, uh, the dolphins are your friends, and they're also your platform, so, gotta be a little bit careful here. A little bit paranoid. I'm getting flashbacks of Big Bertha from Super Mario uh, Brothers 3. Ugh, I hate it. I hate a Big Bertha. The fact that uh, it's a one-hit kill if uh, you get swallowed whole, uh, you get swallowed by Big Bertha and it counts as instant death, regardless of power-up. Okay, so we finished her quickly. Thank you, Dolphins. You rock. And we got 30 points because of it. Sweet. Okay, now we're entering the, our first uh, fortress of the game. Yeah, these fortresses are different from the traditional castles. Uh, for starters, it's underwater. And that's uh, unique, an underwater fortress. That's really cool. Yeah, so the, uh, there are four fortress stages in the entire game, and they do count for 100% uh, completion. Yeah, so the major differences between fortresses and castles is fortresses are guarded by four big rhinos. Uh, Resner will run into them in a in a short uh, in a few mi in a few moments. But right here, these uh, fortresses can be tricky. Some of these fortresses are actually harder than some of the castles in this stage, and I'm not kidding you. Like there are so uh, there, like the fortress that in a later stage of the game, I find it more difficult than the castle itself in that respective world. Yeah, like right here, you got these uh these fangs falling out of the ceiling so be aware for that all right we're done for that part yeah so the good thing about being underwater is you can control uh briefly which uh which way you're going and of course you have these dry bones that throw bones at you and i hate these assholes yeah the good thing is we have the cape feather the cape feather is the only weapon that uh, you could get rid of the dry bones for good. Any enemy that has bones in it, basically, except for those fish right there. Uh, just try to avoid those uh, skeleton fish. You can't avoid them at all with any power ups, so you're gonna have to uh, traverse around them. Alright, we got ball and chain. Alright, not too difficult here. It's a nice challenge. And we have thwomps. Alright, causing all that shock wave. No big deal. Just exploring here. Ooh, and I almost got hit right there. 
Okay, we should have been going right the entire time. I don't know why we would go left. I mean, exploring is a lot more fun when you can swim. I mean, it's not like we're running or have to fly or anything like that. See, all these skeleton enemies just spam the cape feather. Get them out of our way. Alright, I ran into the boss. It's Reznor. There's four of them. Just jump on the platform. They're jumping and knock them into the lava. And that's it. Easy as that. But be aware, those platforms do disappear, so try to be fast. And that's it. Simple as that. Yeah, so these fortress stages could be challenging, but not, not too cryptic. Alright, we're back in the Vanilla Dome, now we're in Van Vanilla Dome 3, and right off the bat, they throw a lava enemy at us. Those are Blargs. And the good thing is, that in this game, you get a, you get a walk on the Blargs, or spin jump them, so you don't get injured. Uh, so you, get, you don't get hurt. However, unfortunately, in New Super Mario Bros. Uh, Wii and the uh, Wii U version, or at the time of this, uh, at the time this, uh, uh, part's gonna be uploaded. The Switch version of this of uh, New Super Mario Brothers U is gonna be released, which is cool. Uh, it's a nice uh, port. It's a nice uh, port to the Switch. Uh, you can't spin jump on those blargs. The blargs in that game are much more uh, deadlier, but here they're kind of harmless. They look a little bit goofy looking. Yeah, but those are nice uh, Super Nintendo graphics there. So yeah, yeah, but yeah, but in the but in the newer versions, blargs are actually more of a threat. They don't even look that threatening, they look more like a sock puppet when you think about it, covered in lava. It's kind of a funny look. Alright, let's take the alternate pathway, just so we can skip some of the level. And like I said, I like the scenery. You know, it's a nice change of scenery, seem ice. Underground ice. Ice, ice, baby. Yeah, and by the way, that's a vanilla ice reference. He's a rapper, just in case if you didn't know that. Alright. Let's get a good part of the stage right here. Right here we got a red shell. Like I said, if we have blue Yoshi, we can use that red shell uh, to fly up and part. But here we have to play the waiting game. Eh, it's not too difficult. Uh, unless you know how to use the, the cape feather at its fullest. Like if you're a Super Mario World uh, speedrunner and a god at this game, you can actually skip all this part by abusing the, the cape feather. Uh, you can do that legitimately. You don't even have to use a... Uh, tool assisted uh tools for that you can do that legitimately but you got to be a very very good good speedrunner for that and again that that was my dog uh, doing that shaking noise i don't know why Ugh, it's annoying but hey just gave her a bath a few minutes ago and eh, she's still pouting but hey she'll get over it yeah so we're almost at the end of the stage right here make sure you jump off here so you don't fall off a pit and i get 21 Blackjack, baby! <laughs> yeah. It's a nice uh, casino reference there. Alright. Later. Alright, now we're entering Vanilla Dome 4. And right off the bat, you have uh, Bullet Bill shooting at you within the first two seconds. That's always unique. Yeah, so now we got the athletic theme back, alright. Yeah, any chance I get to listen to the athletic theme, I love it. It's a real cool kick-ass theme, and I love the remixes too, uh, from Super Mario Galaxy 2. Yeah, so right here, uh, try not to get shot by the bullet bills. Actually, if you're really good, you can actually out outspeed that bullet bill and just off-screen him. Yeah, but this is another good stage if you had the blue Yoshi. I know I've been saying that basically for every part, but... It's true, Blue Yoshi breaks this game. In fact, in the Game Boy Advance port of this game, uh, once you unlock the Blue Yoshi, uh, you, it's very rare that you get the green Yoshi anymore. You get nothing but blue, red, or yellow Yoshis. It's all RNG dependent. Alright, later.
All right, now we're entering the uh, third castle already in this stage. Now we're going after Lemmy Koopa. And so right off the bat, uh, this castle has a unique gimmick. Now we face Magic Koopas, who look like uh, Kamek from uh, Yoshi's Island. Yeah, because this game is a prequel to... Well, actually, Yoshi's Island 2 is a prequel to this game. Yeah, but here they're called Magic Koopas, but to me, I always refer them at as Kamek, just cause of the notoriety. Yeah, so that path right there I took is very important because that's the only checkpoint in the game. If you were to take the lower path, you still have to go through uh, annoying obstacles and you don't get a checkpoint. That's real, uh, that's real uh, bad design right there by Nintendo. I don't like the fact that that's the only checkpoint right there and it's time-based and I don't like that. And remember, uh, the Magic Koopas do spawn as soon as you destroy them they respawn within I believe 10 or 15 seconds so try to be quick yeah so right here we just got rising uh, uh, platforms here and there with lava so try to be careful get rid of these uh, dry bones to get in our way thankfully it's not the dry bones that throw bones at us I hate those enemies we saw, uh, we saw enough of those in the uh, fortress stages so they are a pain in the ass enemy yeah, but with the cape feather, just dump them in the lava. And it's not like they're gonna feel anything. And that's it, we're already at the boss. Look how fast that is! Can you believe that? Yeah, so Lemmy Koopa's hiding uh, in one of these pipes, and the other doppelgangers. And you have this uh, fireball in our way. Uh, it's two. Yeah, nice Lemmy. Try to hide, and that's it, that's three. Yeah, the smart one of the group, give me a break. One future games, he's a smart one of the group. Yeah, but right here, we popped him in the head, knocked him in lava, and uh, that's it. We're done with World 3. See you then. Peace.